20th Century Fox. We're just killing time until the Ice Age franchise comes along. The flying nun left the convent and chose a saucier lifestyle. Okay, keep that title there. I'm still in the word flying. I'm not, I'm, I'll never know now. Airline stewardess begins in a classroom. Radio beam theory. Well, that'll be the name of my new electro band. Always curious about the beam, and answering their many questions is part of the stewardess job. While getting pinched on May the butt. Leslie is a typical pupil, as she's taught the geography of the routes that she will fly. Makeup and boys and shopping. Got it. And how to serve meals in the air. Three out of four passengers want to eat. Those who don't have already tasted Each airline food. A trained nurse with three years of hospital experience. Very good, girls. You've learned your lesson. Which is, when a man threatens to poop on the drink cart, take him at his word. <laughs> Look it up. aboard which the beginner starts practical study, accompanying a senior stewardess. She's 98 years old. Arriving 15 minutes early to get things in order. Then the senior stewardess greets each passenger by name, creating a friendly feeling for the flight. Hey, Mac. Hi, pal. How you doing, lady? Hey, there he is. The Skyliner takes off from LaGuardia Field in New York on the Chicago Run. Chicago Run is also what they call the sickness you get from Eating Chicago's many hot dog field, vendors. Beating to the west and winging over the towers of Manhattan. Which reminds you to yell to your stewardess, where the hell's my Manhattan? Your stewardess passes newspapers around. Page three girl for you? Jumble? Tank McNamara? I could so snag a loogie on Manhattan right now. <laughs> the pupil observes. She must observe how everything is done. So you take this old biddy and you lean her fat ass back industry, like this. Travel by sky. There's not a man in the wing of the plane! Just wanted to sound the all clear on that. And then Hans Katzenjammer says to Fritz Katzenjammer, Und bring das Strudel, too! <laughs> well, hey, I've looked at clouds from both sides the now. from her training as a nurse knows how to prepare the right mixture for the bottle. No! No, it's but poison! I know it! Stay away from me, witch! Ah! <laughs> witch. It's part of her job to point out the sight. Niagara Falls. No passenger wants to miss that scene of glory. Oh, my God, you're taking us to Canada? Let me off! A girl learning a job at three miles a minute and a mile in the sky. That's what I'd like to see for once around here. Now get to work, ladies! The big air transport changes course and speeds on to... What city? The pilot forgot. (laughs) That, says the stewardess, is Detroit. Metropolis of Motordom. The sky hostess must be familiar with the landmarks of a flying route. And studying sights like that is part of her education. As is being a good girl and nipping off to get me a deck of smokes and our gin ricky. The captain thanks you for keeping the plane snake free. Time to get lunch ready. And in the aerial kitchen, the pupil studies some stewardess magic. By passing this stuff off as food. Thermos containers. She must be able to provide 21 sky riding passengers with hot four course meals. If you count a napkin as a course. <laughs> Less than two minutes per meal. <laughs> Served while the plane goes speeding on through Cloudland. The governing council of Cloudland would like to remind you that it does not endorse and is not associated with the airline industry. That's how the stewardess makes out her report. For they're at Chicago, terminus of the flight. These New Yorkers are here to vote for one of the dailies, and then it's back to New York. The airport. And in the control room, the signal is given. Maverick! Feel clear. Land West Runway. No use articles here, Chicago. <laughs> it has been a fast flight of nearly a thousand miles. Comfortable for the passengers. Except for the guy who sat next to Jimmy Big Thighs Wilson. And an illuminating That's lesson rough. for the student. On flights like that, she qualifies for daytime trips. But before she becomes a transcontinental stewardess, there's more. More? How could there be more? The human mind only has so much capacity. Once again, she learns a lesson on an observation flight, observing a senior steward, passenger flying at night with problems all its own. Mainly from that one annoying guy who refuses to take off his sunglasses. In fairness, Mike, he may just be trying to keep track of the visions in his eyes. 
The night run of the night fashion. From the airport on into the dark. Bound for Fort Worth, Texas. Steering south beneath the stars. Reading pinched and frigid I'd monthly like to there. Birth now. Two birth, lower and upper, as in any poem. Though this one has the wings of night. He's saying random phrases now, isn't he? <laughs> the story <laughs> is trained to make up a section. Lower and upper in five minutes. While in the dressing room... That birth better be ready when I'm done in the crapper. The upper berth in the sky sleeper has the advantage of a window above so that a passenger lying in bed can see the star. Or if things go really badly, the ground, then stars, then ground, then stars, then a lot of ground. Night flying in sleepers of the sky is on the increase. Night flying in ladies. 47% of transcontinental air travel is done at night because it's so smooth. There are fewer upward currents of warm air after dark. Okay, try not to snore like a breeder hog, will ya? She snores like a breeder hog and she wets the bed. Calls have been left. By the jerky boys. Me at dawn. It's a sight that many passengers don't want to miss. Sunrise, seen from on high. Okay, steak for the gentleman and saltine cracker for the lady. are served on tables in the sky sleeper. The stewardess brings their breakfast, lying through the dawn. It's like eating at Denny's, only with a much smaller risk of death. <laughs> In the dressing room, getting ready. For well, there's Fort Worth on the broad Texas plain. Spacious airport and a smooth landing in bright sunshine. It almost makes you overlook the huge, huge downside here in Fort Worth. <laughs> Out into broad day stream the night flyer. 7 a.m. and it's 104 degrees with 98% humidity. She is now qualified to take her place as a transcontinental stewardess, all by herself, solo. Unaided, but first, unassisted, here solitary, Texas, autonomously, Texas, without okay. support. Nip it in the butt. girls keep house between sky trips. Don't get any ideas, guys. They're big K.D. Lang fans. They are required to maintain their figures. Must be attractive. Available. Sailing a boat helps. It does? <laughs> All eventually get married. Within three years, on the average. No, they don't marry pilots. 87% of the pilots are already married. No, no, don't, don't, don't turn it. I'm not ready. I, 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 come on, I can't swim. Uh, please, can we go back to shore? I don't know how. The near meter made us do this. Training oh, God, all the time to offset the wedding bell. They not only fly... They also say They drive tanks, too. Set a ping pong before bed and tomorrow's takeoff. I was kind of hoping for a pillow fight, but the censors put the kibosh on that. Yes, Solo. All by herself. Companionless. Unaccompanied. On her own as a transcontinental (laughs) steward. See? Checking her passengers. Remembering faces and names. Like Old Lumpy Skull, Mr. Bad Pants, and the lady who smells like sausage. And it's across the scenic part of it from Fort Worth to Los Angeles. So they're winging west across Texas. Their heads buzzing, their suitcases stuffed with Mickey Gilly commemorative t-shirts and shot glasses. On her first job, that proud feeling of responsibility... As they fly on. Having forgotten to fuel up. The control room calls. My marriage is basically over anyway, he says. <laughs> Her name is posted, showing she's a full-fledged stewardess. No matter what the replacements might say. She's called to the control room. There to be told the speed at which they're flying and the time schedule along the route. But it's all meaningless jumble to her underdeveloped brain. What's the next city? It's Phoenix, Arizona. One of the cities in which Steve Miller wants you to keep on a rock in him, baby. <laughs> One of the many. Over irrigated farmland, mid scenes of western desert. The sound of doggies getting along and singing cowboys not being fenced in. It's mealtime, and she has it figured out. Now those are made of geese that got sucked into the engines. <laughs> miles of fly. To eat a portion of fried chicken that she serves takes about 65 miles. This guy about 100 yards. <laughs> To drink a cup of coffee, a passenger takes 30 miles. To sharpen a pencil, 15.5. To 
to pick up a dropped pen cap, 0.8 miles. To drill a quarter-inch hole in a cinder block, 16.7 miles. Stop him! He's gone mad with detail! Well, there's Los Angeles. The morning vomit has been hosed off the streets and it's shining like a jewel. Fasten belts for landing, and they're shown that, how. That's not my belt. Please Come stop grabbing and pulling the... Ah! She completes her first solo on the transcontinental. Wait, she was solo? Why didn't they mention that before? I don't... Hi, Bob Executive. Which way is business? Flying stewardess, pay your quarter of a million miles a year of service, all in with as happy a land. And remember, don't get ugly or fat or we'll fire your ass. So long from RiffTracks.com. Riff Tracks. Some movies have it coming. This has been a Riff Tracks presentation. Riff Tracks, copyright by Riff Tracks and Legend Films. All rights reserved. Unauthorized use or duplication is prohibited.